Hello everybody. Welcome again to Storytime from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. The story we have for you today comes from Greece and it was written by a man named Aesop or Aesop. I'm not quite sure how to say it, but it's something like that, either Aesop or Aesop. And Aesop wrote a lot of stories. They were kind of short stories, but they were called fables because they are supposed to teach us a little tiny lesson while we listen to a fun story. So the lesson of this story is that kindness is not only found in people and that we must remember to be kind to everyone for we never know when that kindness will be rewarded. This is the story of Androcles and the lion. Once a long, long time ago, when ancient Rome was a great and powerful empire, there was a man named Androcles. Now Androcles was not a happy man, for you see, Androcles was a slave. That meant that he had to do whatever his master told him to. He couldn't argue with him or his master would have him whipped. And if he didn't do his work right, his master wouldn't give him any food at night. And Androcles, unfortunately, had a very cruel master. There were many times when Androcles had done everything he was supposed to do, and still his master would make up some reason why Androcles needed to not be fed that night or to be given a whipping. And sometimes his master gave Androcles a whipping just because he wasn't feeling good that day and he wanted somebody else to feel miserable too. Well, after a while, Androcles decided he did not want to live like this anymore. And so he decided to run away. He knew that if he ran away and he got caught, he would almost certainly be killed. But he decided being killed wouldn't be much worse than where he was living now. And perhaps if he could get away, he could actually live a happy life somewhere else where he was not a slave. For slavery is never fun. Well, Androcles watched for his chance and one day he saw it and he slipped away and he did manage to escape. He ran deep into the woods and just as he was pausing and looking about him and trying to decide where he should go from here, he heard a sound. It sounded as though someone might be whimpering or crying, sort of like they might be in pain. Now, despite Androcles' very hard life so far, he was a kind man and he did not like to see anyone or anything in pain. And so he began looking for the person that was crying. And he followed the noise for a little while and then he came around a tree and he stopped in terror and surprise for in front of him on the ground was a great big lion. And Androcles stood there afraid that the lion would attack him. But then he realized that the lion wasn't standing up and jumping as if it were going to attack. It was actually lying down on the ground. And then as he watched the lion look down, for it had of course looked at Androcles as soon as he came around the corner. But when he didn't move anymore, the lion lost interest in him. And he looked down and he began whimpering again in pain and biting at his paw. Well, Androcles looked a little more carefully and when he, the lion lifted his head again, he could see that there was something in the lion's paw. It was sticking out of the lion's paw where there shouldn't have been anything sticking out of the lion's paw. And so Androcles thought for a moment if there might be a way he could help the lion. So then he got down and he made himself as small as possible so that the lion would not think that he was threatening. And he very slowly began to crawl towards the lion. Now, of course, the lion stopped and looked at him again. 
But because Androcles was so small, and he was going so slowly, and he was not looking straight at the lion as if he were challenging it, the lion did not move. And so Androcles came up very close to the lion's paw, and from there he could see that there was a great big thorn stuck right in the middle of the lion's paw. It had to hurt very, very much, and the lion couldn't get up and walk around or go hunting with a giant thorn in the middle of his paw. And so Androcles reached out very slowly, and he took hold of that thorn, and very quickly, he pulled it out of the lion's paw. The lion made a little roaring sound, but Androcles was thinking that now that the paw was not didn't have a thorn in it anymore, it was going to bleed a lot. And so he reached down to the edge of his shirt, which was a little tattery because of course he was a slave and he couldn't buy himself new clothes. He only had whatever his master had given him. And so he reached to the edge of the shirt where it was already torn and he tore it a little more and he ripped off a strip of his shirt and he reached over and he tied it carefully around the lion's paw. Well, the lion, he sat there for a moment and he looked at Androcles and then he reached out his head and Androcles was a little frightened of all of those big teeth in the lion's mouth. He opened his mouth and instead of biting Androcles, he licked him just once. And Androcles knew then that the lion was thankful that Androcles had helped him and had taken the, the Paw, the thorn out of his paw so that it didn't hurt anymore. Well, after that, Androcles stayed by the lion for he wanted to make sure that his new friend was taken care of and that his paw healed properly. And the lion was grateful that Androcles stayed. He showed this because when he would go out to hunt, he would bring back food for Androcles. And when Androcles would go out into the forest, he would bring back herbs and plants that he could put on the lion's paw to make it heal faster. And so they lived together for a while that way. The lion would go out hunting and bring back food and Androcles would bring back nice bread, and straw and things for the, for the plants to, for the lion to lay on in his little cave. And they slept together in the cave and they, they went on quite nicely that way for a while. But one day the lion went out hunting and he went hunting in the wrong part of the forest. And some soldiers were there and they were looking for lions and they caught him and they took him away. And Androcles also went out into the forest and he went into the same part of the forest as his lion friend and the soldiers found him and they took him captive and they took him back with them to the city, to Rome. Well, Androcles was an escaped slave and so he was condemned to death. They were going to kill him, but they weren't going to just run him through with a sword or with a spear. No, they wanted to make an example out of Androcles. And so they took him to the Colosseum. It was a great, big, round stadium where they used to have all kinds of, well, they called them games. Some of them were games like shot putting and racing. But some of them weren't very fun games, not for the people in them. They would put people down in the arena and they would let loose lions and bears to attack the people and tear them apart. And people thought it was fun to watch. Well, that was what they decided to do to Androcles. They were going to put him in the Colosseum and they were gonna loose the lions and let the lions attack him and kill him. The day came and you can believe Androcles was not very happy. He was not looking forward to being killed by lions. That would be rather painful. And so the soldiers took him and they put him in the middle of the Colosseum. And Androcles just wanted to run and hide, but there was nowhere to run to. And they hadn't given him any weapons. And so he just stood there and waited for the lions to be let loose. And over across the Colosseum, he could see the soldiers opening the door where the lions would come out. And Androcles saw a lion come running out of the door. And he covered his eyes 
and he closed, he cold, curled himself up a bit, and he waited for the lion to jump on him and eat him. But nothing happened. And so eventually, Androcles took his hands away from his eyes and he looked. And there in front of him, standing there, looking up at him, almost with a smile on his face, was his friend from the forest, the lion from the forest. And so Androcles fell down on his knees and he wrapped his arms around the lion's neck and he gave him a great big hug. And the lion wrapped his paw around him and wrestled with him on the ground, like they did so many times in their cave back in the forest. Well, the emperor had come to watch the games that day, and he was very surprised. He wanted to know who was this slave that could tame lions. And so he called out to someone to find out who the slave was. And Androcles was brought in front of the emperor and the emperor said to him, who are you and how can you tame these lions? How is this possible? And Androcles said, oh, your majesty, I did not tame the lion. You see, I did this lion a service and now he has paid me back. I helped him and now he helps me. And he told the emperor the whole story of how he had found the lion with a thorn in its paw and saved him from the pain of the thorn. The emperor was very impressed. And he said to Androcles, I do not quite understand this. And Androcles said, your majesty, kindness is not only found in human beings and in people, kindness can be found in animals as well. And if we help others, then they will help us in return. It is the way of the world. It is the way of the world, said the emperor. Androcles, would you come? Would you come and live in my palace? You may bring the lion with you and you may live in my palace for the rest of your days. Well, I thank you, your majesty, but I think the lion and I would be happier in the forest. He certainly would be, and I would not be happy without my friend. But your majesty, I am a slave. Oh no, said the emperor, no, no, no. For the great kindness that you have shown here, I free you from your slavery. And Androcles, if you wish to go with your lion friend back to the forest, then I certainly give you permission to do so. And so Androcles and the lion very happily were freed from their slavery. Androcles from his master and the lion from the Colosseum. And they went back to the forest and they lived there very happily until the very end of their days. And that is the story of Androcles and the Lion, one of Aesop's fables. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back and join us again next time. Now, from now on, we're just gonna have stories on Fridays at 3 p.m. Central Time, here from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. We'll see you next Friday, everybody. Bye.